let's actually stick on Russia because I got a Russian story near the end of our page here. Yeah. Um, and it's all about the Russian sanctions. And it's talking about the Russian economy and the effects of our sanctions in the West and kind of how they're getting around them. And then still. still getting around them very effectively and how they've changed their entire economy to deal with the Western sanctions. So mm. Russia has completely altered its international trade relationships completely um, due to the lack of we- or the, the rescindance of Western demand. The main one, Russia has jumped right into China's arms. Trade with China has hit a record of $240 billion last year. I want to put that in perspective. In 2022, that number was around 10 to 15 billion. 10, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. 100 billion to 150 billion. Now okay. it's up to 200, around 250 billion. So you're looking at almost doubling in one year. We're looking at an almost <laughs> doubling in their export That's or crazy. their trade relationship in one year. Yeah. Russia uh, sells its oil that it used to sell to Germany and France over to China now. So I remember early on in the war, we were actually talking about like, okay, well, is Russia going to be able to dump all their oil onto the Chinese market? Will China be able to have that much demand? And it seems like they do, but not just China. They are also increasing their exports of petroleum to India. Yeah. The, India Exports to India have increased over 1.4 million barrels a day since the invasion of Ukraine. In perspective, before the invasion, they only exported 100,000 barrels per day. Mm. Now they're up to 1.5 million per day. This is uh, uh, India has been Russia's bankroller in a lot of ways by buying their petroleum products. Yeah, I mean... In- for India and for China, I will say this makes sense because obviously prices for Russian oil dropped precipitously after its invasion, after all of its Western customers stopped wanting to buy from it. Yeah. So they're just being like cheap energy. Cheap like, energy. I'll take it. Duh. Now, not just so now that's the petroleum sector, right? But also the financial sector. Um, Russia is now doing a lot of their export trading with the yuan, the yuan instead of the dollar. Yeah. Right. They're totally off the dollar. They're using the yuan for like is it, everything. Is it the yen? The yen. Uh, you want, I know it's yuan. spelled Yuan, but I think it's oh, pronounced it Yen. Be, I don't know. I'll say Yen. Now, the Yen is taking over basically all their exports, right? And it's not just their exports. Households in Russia are now stashing their savings in Yen. They're stashing their savings in Chinese currency. Companies are even borrowing off of the Yen. They're taking out loans in the Yen. Yeah. They are totally using that currency. Now, we can see in 2020... It was almost like 0% of the of the Russian economy was using the yen. In 2023, we're up to around 40%, 35% of the Russian economy using the yen. Yeah, it, They've totally jumped right into China's arms. And it's working out very well for China, and it's working out really well for Russia. Do you do you think... That this is good for China? Um, I mean, I'm sure it's good for China. Okay. It's just more investment in China. Yeah. Right? I'm, But I'm wondering, first of all, what could the West have done about this? I don't know. I think we're... I think nothing. Right. Like, I think, I mean, they, we've been cracking down in like at a more and more extreme magnitude every time a report comes out about how the sanctions aren't good enough. Mm-hmm. Um, the fact that they are going to the yen is somewhat proof that they are being locked out of the Western financial order. Yes. The Western financial sanctions have been very effective. Yes. Yeah. The financial ones have been effective. There's no doubt about it. Yes. Whether or not they can just use other financial services and other financial tools, that's a different story. Yeah. But the Western ones, they've been blocked out of. Yes. And so I do think this is good for China, but also there is, God, I'm not, I'm not solid enough on finance and like understanding currencies, but I do, I've read some of the fact that China's yen is not a it's not a super stable yes. or strong currency. Yes. So Russia's risk has definitely gone up and by having China to do this. has interest in devaluing their currency in a lot of ways to keep their foreign to keep their exports cheaper yes. than like domestic goods, right? Yes. So one of the ways China is able to dominate US markets and other western markets so effectively is because they devalue their currency which makes it cheaper for American companies to then go in and buy Chinese goods instead of buying domestically produced U.S. goods. Mm -hmm. So if now a lot of Russian people, households, uh, companies start using the yen for their regular financial transactions, that increases the power of the yen, which then makes their exports more expensive in the long term because demand for the yen goes up. Yes, but of course, they they will still order their state-owned banks to manipulate the currency so it won't matter and this is where like i just feel like i can't really say much more but i want to i want to go one more thing on that right if you're saying that the chinese banks would see this like right rise in value of their currency as a possible threat if they devalue that currency 
that's terrible for Russian people who are saving in the yen, right? But mm. it's very, very good for Russian companies who take loans out based off the yen. Okay. It's very good for Russian companies who take who take um, money out, uh, who yeah. take loans on the yen. Yeah. It's the Russian people who start saving in yen that are going to get hurt from this. That makes sense. Yeah. Which I'm sure Russia is fine with. Yeah, I guess they're, yeah, they don't care. Yeah. No. Um, the other way that I think is the biggest issue that the West can and should do something about is that Russia is using its ex satellite states to get around the Western sanctions. We've talked about this before, mm -hmm. but this data makes it perfectly clear. Um, even not only, okay, not only is it like regular manufactured goods that are getting into Russia, we're talking about possible military materials making its way into Russia through countries like Armenia. And I want to focus on Armenia. This is a really staunch Russian ally. They've been a staunch Russian ally since like the 1700s. Mm. They've always been allies with Armenia. Uh, Armenia. Russia has viewed themselves as the protector of Armenia from the Turks and the Muslims that are around them, okay, because Armenia is a Christian nation. So what, what am I saying? here since the invasion of ukraine western exports to armenia have almost tripled in size and then as we see that tripling in exports to armenia the armenian exports to russia have quadrupled or tripled themselves so yeah something tells me armenia hasn't been producing that many amazing things that russia wants to buy something tells me yeah it might have something to do with the fact that these um, these western goods are getting into armenia and then going straight into russia yeah somehow i don't think it's domestic consumption has just like tripled over the course of a year yeah to get them there so here we go guys we need to do something about armenia and ex-satellite states i'm not anti-Armenia in any way. If we go down to the Azerbaijan versus Armenia um, geopolitical struggle, I lean on the Armenia side, but we got to do something about this because this is ridiculous. Armenia, I, what is the purpose of having the sanctions if possible military equipment is going to be getting into Russia? I think, okay, we we can. I'm sure they are They are trying. I'm sure. I do know, like the U.S. is, is has been ramping up these sanctions by placing... By, by de-incentivizing companies specifically yes. from That's dealing right. with Russian agents or Russian um, military organizations. But what I'm wondering is, I, I, I'm expecting that the increased friction from the sanctions is still having an effect. Yeah. It's just not perfect. Right. Right. It's increased friction, but it's not a complete stopgap. Yeah. It's not, I'm not saying that the sanctions have done nothing. That's that's not true. No. What I am saying is that the sanctions aren't tight enough. No. And if semiconductors are slipping through this and semiconductors are making their way through Armenia into Russia, we got to do something to stop that ASAP. That is not acceptable. Yeah. Because one of the good things about the Ukraine war, if there's any good things to be taken out of this, is the fact that Russia won't have the capacity to replace a lot of their higher end military equipment. Yeah. Right. The one thing that is now just I'm remembering on Friday, which was five days ago or four days ago and was the second anniversary of the Russian invasion. Mm -hmm. The U.S. did slap additional sanctions on Russia in concert with other Western countries because of the two-year anniversary as well as the killing of Alexei Navalny. Um, so maybe in a few months we'll be able to come back to this and see that there has been a real change because the reporting that I read said that those are pretty serious, pretty strict. Yeah. Um, but we're going to have to wait to find out. We have to wait and see. Yeah. The one other thing I'll mention on this and news that came out is that Russia's economy grew like pretty substantially last year. It's like 2.6%. 2.6% GDP. It's almost, in t it is a pure military economy now. Yes, yes, yes. It is projected that they, or it is estimated that they spent about 10% of GDP on their military industrial complex, which does fuel their economy, but also does put them in massive amounts of debt and means that as soon as this war is over, Russia's economy will collapse. Yeah, I mean, it's not stable to build, build an economy based off of war unless no. he's trying to go to war with NATO, which I hope he's not. No, but, which he is. I mean, but even that, I don't think it's, it's not permanently sustainable. No, I mean, no, he'll, obviously. Because Russia will get destroyed in a ground war with NATO mm -hmm. and then it will have nothing. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, building on economy based off bullets is not a good way to go. Yeah.